Hey everyone, welcome to Offer Vault News. I'm your host, Eddie Grand. In this episode, we're going to talk about how pop up ads will keep crushing it in 2020. So stay tuned to learn more about that. But first, here's a rundown of the top headlines this week Spotify is the latest platform to halt political ads. The company said it will put the brakes on political advertising in early 2020. There will no longer be political ad sales in the U.S. on the platform starting very soon, Ad Age reports. The change will impact the company's self-serve, ad-supported music streaming platform and its podcasts. It will only affect the U.S. because it's the only country where the company has previously allowed political ads. Spotify told AdAge in a statement that it does not yet have the necessary level of robustness in our process, systems, and tools to responsibly validate and review this content. So they pretty much don't want to get caught up with fake news. They're not even trying to touch the news right now. With the U.S. presidential election coming up this year and primaries just around the corner, tech companies have to wrestle with new ways to deal with political advertising on their platforms. This move by Spotify follows similar decisions made by Twitter and Google late last year. Additionally, Microsoft-owned LinkedIn and Bing do not allow political advertising. Facebook introduced new rules for political campaigns and issue ads in 2018, requiring advertisers to be verified, but Facebook refuses to fact-check political advertisements. Spotify's new policy will cover candidates, elected and appointed officials, nonprofits and political parties, and super PACs, as well as advocacy content around any political entities or legislative or judicial outcomes. Spotify will reassess this decision as its capabilities evolve. What do you guys think? Should there be political ads on streaming platforms like Spotify? What about on self-serve advertising platforms? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know your thoughts. Operators of multi-million dollar work-from-home scheme settle FTC allegations. The operators of a work-from-home scheme and the CEO of their primary affiliate network will pay out nearly $1.5 million. To settle an unfair and deceptive practices complaint, alleging that they used spam emails fake celebrity endorsements, and fabricated news stories to lure consumers into buying work-from-home services. Effin Ads owners Jason Braylow and Brandon Harshbarger, along with an affiliate network called W4 LLC, racked up more than 50,000 orders from 2015 to 2017 at an average order price of $97, according to the FTC complaint. The bulk unsolicited emails included from lines that falsely claimed they were coming from news organizations such as CNN or Fox News, and the subject lines would falsely suggest the opportunity was endorsed by celebrities like Warren Buffett. Effin ads used phony celebrity endorsements, made-up news stories, and spam email from fake senders to push a work-from-home scheme, said Andrew Smith, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection. Consumers should be on alert for scams promising lots of income for little or no effort. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. The spam emails would link to websites that displayed fake news stories and false celebrity endorsements that were previewed in the email copy. People who clicked on the links in the fake news stories were then referred to Effin Ads' sales website, which pitched the company's work-from-home schemes. The schemes operated under numerous brand names such as Secure Home Profits, Paydays at Home, Home Cash Flow Club, Home Cash Code, Your Income Getaway, Home Payday Club, and many more. Effin Ads 
was also selling consumers' contact information to third-party telemarketers who tried to sell those same consumers business coaching services, which cost thousands of dollars. The FTC's complaint alleges that effing ads perpetuated the scheme by using shell companies and straw owners to obtain merchant accounts used to process consumer credit card payments. They were even laundering credit cards to evade merchant monitoring programs. As part of the settlement, W4 Chief Executive Jason Walker will pay $1.3 million. And he's also prohibited from providing any affiliate marketer with ads containing false or misleading representations about celebrity endorsements, objective reviews, or news source affiliations. The settlements with Harsh Barger and Bray Low and Effin Ads impose an $11.3 million judgment, but that's going to be suspended upon payment of $25,000 by Harsh Barger and $121,948 by Braylo because they apparently can't pay the full amount. They're both also permanently banned from marketing or selling business opportunities or business coaching products and are prohibited from making any misrepresentations in the marketing or sale of any product or service. Does the punishment fit the crime? Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Popular Chinese-owned social media app TikTok is being banned by the U.S. Army amid security concerns. TikTok had a breakout year in 2019, and it continues to be the most buzzworthy social media app into the new year. The app's growing popularity has now become a concern of the U.S. Army as TikTok is no longer allowed on any government phones. A U.S. Army spokesperson told Military.com that it is considered a cyber threat. The ban comes in the wake of Democratic Senator Charles Schumer and Republican Senator Tom Cotton writing a letter to U.S. Director of National Intelligence Joseph McGuire, insisting an investigation into TikTok would be necessary to determine whether the Chinese-owned social media video sharing app poses any risk to national security. Given these concerns, we ask that the intelligence community conduct an assessment of the national security risks posed by TikTok and other Chinese-based content platforms operating in the U.S. and brief Congress on these findings. The letter said, the social media app known as Douyin in China and TikTok outside its home market is owned by Beijing-based company ByteDance. Previously, Senator Marco Rubio had accused TikTok of trying to censor content in the U.S. to keep in line with the interests of the Chinese government. On the same day the U.S. Army announced its ban, TikTok released its first transparency report. We take any request from government bodies extremely seriously and closely review each such request we receive to determine whether, for example, the request adheres to the required legal process or the content violates a local law, the company wrote in its transparency report. TikTok is committed to assisting law enforcement in appropriate circumstances while respecting the privacy and rights of our users. The report revealed that the law enforcement in India made the most total requests during the period with 107. Of those, 99 were legal requests and the remaining eight were for emergencies. However, TikTok only provided 47% of the information that was requested by the Indian government. The U.S. had 79 total requests and received 86% of the information requested. For Japan, the country with the third most requests, at 35, 21% of the information requested was produced. Of the total, 28 were legal requests. The company just hired global law firm K&L Gates 
LLP in an effort to further strengthen the platform's moderation policies and overall transparency. TikTok made the external hires to further increase transparency around our content moderation policies and the practices we employ to protect our community. Vanessa Pappas, TikTok's US general manager said at the time. Does the rapidly growing popularity of the Chinese owned app TikTok pose a real threat to the United States? We wanna know your thoughts. Join the conversation in the Offer Vault official Facebook group. Affiliate Summit West is coming up. The paper callers party will begin after the meat market at 6 p.m. on Monday, January 27th. It will be located at Paris Las Vegas Beer Park by the Eiffel Tower entrance. Sponsored by Offer Vault and hosted by Ringba, hands down the best platform for pay per call in the business, this is a party you're not going to want to miss. If you're in pay per call and you don't work with Ringba, you need to talk to them right now. Hit up sales at ringba.com. I'm sure everyone would agree that they hate pop up ads. It's pretty much a general consensus that people don't like them, at least the end users who keep seeing them. But here's the thing, they're not going anywhere. In this week's main story, we are going to cover how pop-up ads will keep crushing it in 2020. Offer Vault users know them, end users hate them, and you know what? Pops are here to stay at least in 2020 and the foreseeable future. Why and how is this possible? Because they work quite well, in fact. After assessing 2 billion pop-up ads, Sumo reported that on average, pop-up ads convert over 3% of viewers. Even so, within the affiliate industry, pop-ups can be a polarizing topic. Let's take a deep dive into the state of pop-up advertising in 2020. Starting with the very basics, pop-ups are still amazing for advertising. With the right strategy, pops can actually be a very good way to convince people to sign up for your email list, become a lead, or buy your products. The key is figuring out how to provide value and minimize frustration. We spoke with Michael Bogosian, VP of Sales at RTX Platform and an expert in pop-ups. Here's what he had to say. Pops are a powerful and effective source of traffic for affiliates, whether you're new to performance marketing or a longtime veteran. One of the reasons why Pops outperform other ad formats is because so many different verticals work for Pops. Now, before we move forward, I'd just like to give a big shout out to Michael for providing us with this exclusive state of pop-up advertising in 2020 overview. Anyone who is interested in buying pops needs to check out RTX Platform at www.rtxplatform.com. We here at Offer Vault highly recommend that you work with them. Following our email exchange with Michael, we put together a list of best practices for pop-up ads in 2020. Here's the list. The first and most important thing is to make sure you're adding some type of value, whether it's something like discounts, limited time offers, or exclusive access, you want people to feel like they're getting value from the ad and products or services offered. Simple enough, right? Number two, reach only the right people by picking and choosing targets that range from run of network to keywords. Some things remain true across all ad formats. In the case of pop-up ads, having the right targeting remains critical, as it is with other ad formats you may already be familiar with. Number three, scale by adding new targets, raising bids when things are good, lowering when things are slow, and optimizing off non-performant sub-IDs and domains. You've nailed down your targeting. Now it's time for you to assess the winners and losers. Up your bids according to what works, 
kill off or lower bids on whatever is underperforming. Following the numbers should always be your basis for optimization at this stage. Number four, make sure you are using a conversion pixel. Need I say more? This should be a given for any affiliate marketer not living under a rock in the year 2020. In the first quarter, verticals like diet and finance are incredibly lucrative thanks to those sticking to their resolutions for the new year. Don't take it from me, take it from Michael Bogosian himself. The man essentially runs an entire performance marketing exchange and knows what works and what doesn't in pops. E-commerce dominates the fourth quarter. Once again, take this advice from the man himself, Michael Bogosian, Vice President of Sales at RTX Platform. We know Q4 of 2019 is now behind us, but looking forward into the horizon of 2020, you should be prepared to go big on e-com with pops once Q4 and the holiday shopping season arrive. Surveys, freebies, dating, games, and coupons are offers that see major ROI year-round. Stuck somewhere between Q1 and Q4 and need new offers to run? or just looking for new verticals to experiment with, Michael considers all of these to be reliable, safe bets when getting your feet wet in the pop-up traffic waters, or even suited for the season pops experts out there. Love them or hate them, pop-up ads work, and they're here to stay. Use these tips to help yourself create profitable pops campaigns that people will actually appreciate. Feel free to let us know any advice and suggestions you have for pop-up ads, best practices in 2020. Join our Offer Vault official Facebook group and we can continue the conversation there. Closing out this week's episode of Offer Vault News, make sure you subscribe to our channel and like our page so you never miss a new episode. And as always, we want to hear from you. Tell us about people running scams, people that didn't pay, people that ripped you off. Send everything to tips at offervault.com. Once again, that's tips at offervault.com. All submissions are entirely confidential. Eddie Grand, Offer Vault News, signing out. We'll see you next time.